If I want to take Ramanujan's contributions to school level students, uh, we talk of magic squares, uh, especially Ramanujan magic squares. Could you please elaborate on the number theory? Oh, yeah, no, that's very mysterious. The magic squares, of course, have always had a lot of meanings in different cultures because somehow there is a lot of symmetry and I guess a lot of surprisingly somewhat serious mathematics also in it and not clear why. Okay. Not only Chinese, other cultures, even Indian culture had, I mean, they had symbolic meanings for the magic square, they had uh, spiritual meanings, various types of squares. Now, when someone like Ramarajan started doing this, he would reveal some mathematics, you know. So, not many serious mathematicians at that point uh, took up magic squares because it's considered recreational. Maybe one, one, one should speculate that if a serious mathematician does look up, uh, start uh, looking at magic squares, it will reveal perhaps more things. I don't know. Um, somehow it happened. We can never explain why Ramarajan studied this or studied that. Is only thing we can see that you know his style of doing things were because uh, I think I guess the pap paper was very expensive, so you have to write on a slate and uh, erase. So you'll work out things and then write down the final result, right? So you discovered many beautiful things which you just note down, and often you'll note down a very special case of that. And a lot of people think that you know he may not have had a proof. But as Bruce Burnt says, you know, that he, he would be able to make up a proof, most of the case, most of the times. But it's just that the style was that and it was also those results are for himself. So in that sense, to satisfy himself, he might have worked on magic squares and uh, found that there is interesting mathematics there. I, it's still mysterious why magic squares should have so much mathematics. Could you please comment on some contributions in modern times, post Ramanujan? Oh yes, that's very important. See, what happens is a lot of people think that after Ramanujan, I mean, if you ask them to name a mathematician, they say Ramanujan, Indian mathematician. Nobody else. And otherwise, old ancient mathematicians like Bhaskaracharya and so on. But uh, after Ramanujan, there has been, a, in some sense, a continuous uh, stock of people. And they have gone through traditional ways of education. So, since Ram Ramanujan's story is so romantic, coming from such humble circumstances and failing in the usual rigorous system of our uh, judgment, and various examinations he failed and uh, nevertheless produced such uh, path breaking results that is romantic so it appeals to him in fact a lot of mathematicians also don't know exactly what Ramanujan contributed they know about something about Ramanujan but precisely so that's that romantic story itself so in that sense the few years after Ramanujan number of mathematicians who did very well and established their names they worked on similar things to Ramanujan in some sense anal uh, analytic number theory this kind of like for example Professor Chawla, Sarvadaman Chawla was there, Pillai, Meenakshi Sundaram. These people were uh, Anand Rao, okay, Vijay Raghavan. Then there is Vaidyanatha Swami. Vaidyanatha Swami is not a number theory person, it's a topology. But uh, so a lot of people, Anand Rao, for example, was a student of Little World. So I think a lot of these people were doing number theory of that kind, either combinatorial or analytic. Later, of course, you have people like Harish Chandra. Then, of course, you have Mahalano Bis and you have many names to be proud of actually. A lot of people are not aware of contemporary names. Okay, they may not have contributed in such a great impact, they may not have had, but they have had very big impact. For example, Harish Chandra definitely can be compared with Ramanujan. Actually, interestingly, now in the present day mathematics, we can view Ramanujan's conjectures and Harish Chandra's work in, in the, under the same footing in representation theory, where Ramanujan conjectures are reformulated in terms of representation theory. So, Ramanujan may, may not have imagined that, but somehow in some core way he had these ideas. So, which with the correct language it can be expressed in modern day language and it is still continues to have impact. So, these are some names I mentioned. I think we should also remember that uh, present day mathematics, we have quite a few women mathematicians from India, we should be proud of. Like Parimala Raman is there, Sujata Ramdurai, then uh, Riddhi Shah, a uh, lot of women mathematicians have established themselves. They come through traditional uh, backgrounds. I mean, mathematical backgrounds. And so, the story is not so this, but they have made, they are all well, well known. And these people you should be proud of. I think people somehow should be more educated about who are the later people. Someone is asked about who is Harishindra, they may not know, lot of people. Or, okay, let's say even Chawla, who is, uh, again, he was in Princeton for many years. He has had an impact in number theory quite a bit. I agreed that nobody, perhaps none of them, have, except Harishindra, has had as much of an impact as Ramanujan. 
perhaps ramanand himself might not have imagined that his conductors and his work would be generalized in such a fashion and viewed in such a fashion that it continues to have an impact it is quite amazing but we we should educate people about other other who came later and present day mathematics you see the present day scenario we have people like uh, narasimhan seshadri ramanand raghunathan these are all big names and of course now you see persons of indian origin uh, in the us and so on who have been doing well like manjul bhargava are getting the fields medal and also other people akshay venkatesh based in australia you know the thing is uh, somehow this influence of ramanujan has been there in a, in a romantic way so a lot of people have taken up mathematics for that reason later they might have branched out to other things which ramanujan never did uh, for example uh, ramanujan never did anything other than number theory in some sense modular forms is his strength he must have had a theory of modular forms yes, but he never if you to have to formulate a theory of modular forms you should know complex analysis and according to hardy ramanujan did not know cauchy's theory how does such a person contribute so much it's not clear he had his own way of theorizing things as well so he is a, she's a phenomenon he is an enigma that's no doubt about it but there have been people coming from traditional background traditional mathematics background who done well and established their names all over the world i think we should perhaps educate people about common people i think it is obvious uh, in the sense that when you come into from conventional uh, route so you uh, focus on one area so definitely they, their works will be in that particular narrow area it could be so see conventional background in the sense that you go through a certain okay nowadays it's it's much more difficult to be an expert in many areas unlike the renaissance period or there is a period when you know you had people who are doing oiler was there doing lot of things they were doing gauss that kind of thing is almost impossible now to be universally seen. nevertheless all the good mathematicians are at least experts in more than one area otherwise you don't really deeply contribute so traditional background only in the sense of going through usual formal university education and you're done well in that not failing through the system like that so in that sense but uh, i think uh, in some that sense i don't think ramanujan was also so wide as something it's just that his contributions have had such impact but uh, it's not as though so many subjects he did so professor ramanujan is considered by many to be part of the big league of mathematicians like uh, heiler jacobi what are your comments yeah i think this is hardy who thought of uh, ramanujan in the same league as oiler and uh, uh, jacobi in fact i think he was thinking of his real inventiveness more of his originality of the results rather than you know and uh, there is one more reason i think both of them all three of them were interested in algebraic identities you know things like q series identities you know that inventiveness originality was a common trait for all three of them actually it's interesting because uh, also hardy thought didn't think of ramanujan as a theory builder because you know he, he didn't go through a traditional way of learning cauchy's theorem and things like that so he probably you know thought of just originality of his results but not something uh, somebody as a theory builder ramanujan as a theory builder but interestingly you know selberg says that you know had he had a conventional background he might have become a theory builder ramanujan might have because he speculated that perhaps he had his, in his own way a theory of modular forms as what i would say so. uh, selberg uh, the late number theorist once said that he was greatly influenced, influenced by ramanujan uh, the particularly the ramanujan hardy paper on arithmetical functions and at the age of 17 itself selberg wrote his first research paper again uh, on arithmetical functions so is that such a landmark uh, paper of course so the paper on arithmetical functions as far as i know is due to ramanujan not ramanujan hardy ramanujan hardy had papers on partition functions this arithmetical functions paper is perhaps the one which has the maximum impact on uh, for the next 50 years uh, this is the one which introduced the ramanujan tau function and made this conjectures he proved a few results about tau function but he made conjectures which are phenomenal and you know which led to a lot of uh, developments for the next 50 years i should say because this is in 1918 i think 1973 delin got the fields medal proving one of the conjectures and to this day actually it's interesting that somehow or the other ramanujan conjectures have been generalized and in the re- reformulated form they are they are you know central to mathematics in the so called langlands program ramanujan conjectures are seldom uh, are very central and uh, ramanujan himself may not have made that but it's the first step of those conjectures i think that's really influential paper in some sense that paper has a maximum impact on mathematics i should say 
Interestingly, I think Hardy had said once that we seem to have come to some backwaters of mathematics at some point about this. Um, but I think this is really uh, an amazing paper. I guess Silberg might have liked this kind of mathematics more. In fact, at some, some point he mentioned that perhaps Ramanujan could have gone to somebody like Hecke in Germany, you know, who used to do, he was more of an algebraic uh, commutative nature. Hardy was a great analyst. So he treated him like an analyst. In fact, uh, I, uh, I remember reading Selberg saying that this exact formula for the number of partitions of n, which is called Rademacher's formula. In his very first letter, Ramanujan had written a formula which is not exact, but it could be leading to such a formula. When Hardy read it and when uh, Ramanujan was in UK, they wrote a paper where it is an asymptotic formula. So somehow Selberg holds Hardy responsible for not having an exact formula. He says that his inclinations are more analytic. So it could have probably, Ramanujan could have done possibly even better in somebody, somebody like Heke, who had similar uh, interests. Interest. Yeah.